And joining us for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Amin Khan, a gastroenterologist at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. American Cancer Society had, had two items recently on colorectal cancer. One, that the uh, fatality rate, mortality rate was declining, good news. Second point was that it's going up in young people, people in their 20s, 30s, 40s. What do you think's happening? Well, um, that research study it was done by the National Cancer Institute, and what they did is they studied 490,000 cases since 1973. And what they showed was that amongst Generation X and Millennials, the rate of colorectal cancer, or the incidence, is going up, um, which is quite striking. They did not expect to find that in the study. Um, however, in the older population, the incidence is decreasing, and I think that's because of the good job of, well, not fully good job yet for screening people, um, which is what we have to do more of, but um, what is concerning is the young people. Um, in that study, though, they didn't identify the risk factors of why this is happening, but we, we may have a good idea of why that may be happening. Let's start with the, the basics of, of colon cancer and why it's so difficult to, to pick up. Your office sent over a, a graphic of uh, what the part of the colon looks like and has a couple of dots in there referred to as polyps. One sort of appears to be sticking out. Is that the origin of, of colon cancer? So the interesting thing about colon cancer, it is preventable. So it's very unlike other cancers where there's a progression and the growth of colon cancer is actually pretty slow. So with the screening tests, we can try to capture it before it turns into colon cancer. And the large intestine is flat. It's a hollow tube and it's got a flat lining. So polyps actually are growths that happen within the colon and from the wall extends from the wall and becomes a mushroom eventually. And as time progresses, you get mutations in these growths, which are called polyps, and then they turn into colon cancer. Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question about colon cancer, give us a call. We'll have the number on the screen. You could also tweet your questions. Twitter address is at MPT News. Now, if it was only as easy to see inside somebody's colon as that graphic made it look, it's a procedure called colonoscopy that uh, tends to come up in jokes a lot because right. it's a reputation for being difficult. So um, a colonoscopy is the best way for screening for colon cancer. What it is, is the tube with the light on the of it. We insert it into the rectum and go out through, a, through a, uh, the entire large intestine, which is possibly six feet long. But people are sleeping. I've had thousands of patients who have woken up and told me that's the easiest thing I've ever done because the sedation we give you to remember a single thing. The only drawback of the study is that you do have to get prepped the night before and get cleaned out, but that helps us visualize the colon better. But usually it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. People are sleeping and they don't remember a single thing. Let's and see. I'll go ahead. Let's grab a phone call. Uh, sure. Montgomery County, this is Ken. Ken, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi. Yeah. Um, my, my question is, I, I had a virtual colonoscopy, and um, I, I knew at the time virtual wasn't regarded as being quite as good as a regular colonoscopy, and I wonder if that has changed. And two, how frequently should one have a virtual colonoscopy? Excellent questions. Thank you. So a virtual colonoscopy is one of the other screening modalities that is recommended. Um, it's not as sensitive for smaller polyps growths. Um, it is good at detecting um, about three quarters of an inch or 10 millimeters in diameter length, the polyp. Um, it is good for that. Um, you do have to get a similar prep as you would for a colonoscopy. And um, as far as if it's improved, the rates are pretty, pretty much the same. Um, and if you are found to have a polyp on a virtual colonoscopy, then you need a colonoscopy to remove the polyp. But it is a good screening test, and you need it every five years if you have a virtual colonoscopy. So that's a key point. When you perform a colonoscopy, if somebody had one of those, one of those things sticking out, you can take care of it right then. That's the difference between that and other screening modalities. With the colonoscopy, at the time of the procedure, you can prevent colon cancer happening right at that moment because we can remove the lesion that may turn into colon cancer. Are there other alternatives uh, either available or in development uh, aside from a virtual colonoscopy? So and what is a virtual colonoscopy? So a virtual colonoscopy is the other name for it is CT colonography. Actually, a radiologist performs it, and it is a CT scanner, an X-ray of the colon, and it creates 
creates two-dimensional and three-dimensional images, and they're able to see within the colon what's going on. Do they have to, like, on. inflate the colon? They have to in inflate with air. It's hard yes. to see the advantage. <laughs> yeah, well, you still have to get a prep. That's right. the thing. And then if they do find something, you have to get Just another prep and another colonos uh, colonoscopy. Okay, so what else do you have? So stool tests are the traditional way of testing for colon cancer. And when I was talking about that growth sequence from flat lining to polyp, um, those polyps secrete sometimes microscopic levels of blood, and when you do a stool test, it checks for blood. And a newer test called Cologuard, which has been out in the market as on commercials, that tests for DNA mutations as well as blood in the stool. So um, again, um, this Cologuard test, it is more sensitive than the older stool tests. Still not as sensitive as a colonoscopy, and if you have a positive result on any of these tests, you'll need a colonoscopy. Let's uh, grab a phone call. Prince George's County. This is Gina. Gina, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yes, hi. My name is Gina, and I'm calling because I want to know what uh, genetically modified food has to do with the increase in colon cancer. Wow, great question. Thank you so much. So we don't know too much research about this about this yet, but that recent study that we um, referred to earlier with younger generation getting colon cancer, that's one of the theories I have, even though it's not proven yet, that um, the obesity epidemic that is occurring in Generation X and the millennials may be correlating with colorectal cancer. Um, more processed foods that we're eating, more red meats, um, and low fiber diet, um, they're all contribute um, to colorectal cancer. And as far as the genetically modified diet, it's hard to say if that's playing a role with colorectal cancer or not. But uh, processed foods in general are not a good idea. Call from Prince George's County. This is Mark. Uh, Mark, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I'm, uh, I was very pleased to hear you referring to the causes of the cancer as being perhaps the high red meat, uh, uh, not too much fiber, lots of fat. I think it's very, very important that that be the primary point that's raised here is that it's the diet that people are suffering from that is leading to the colorectal cancer. Would you agree with that? How, how good is the science on that? Um, the science is good for as far as proving that low fiber, high consumption of red meat, cigarette smoking, um, age and family history, those are all the risk factors for colorectal cancer. So one of the things that I usually stress to my patients is physical activity, exercise, maintain a normal weight, high fiber diet, and avoid smoking are the number one things you can do to prevent colon cancer in yourselves and your loved ones. Who should get uh, screened? Anybody over the age of 50 should be getting screened for uh, colon cancer. And recently, um, in the American College of Gastroenterology, they recommend African Americans get screened at age 45 and above. And if you have a family history, that changes things. That changes things. So if you have a family history, meaning a first degree relative, uh, parent, sibling, or child, diagnosed before the age of 60, then you yourself should have a colonoscopy at the age of 40 or 10 years before the earliest diagnosis of that age. So people don't race in to have colonoscopies because we talked about the prep and the, the nature of the procedure. There's also the insurance question. And we were talking about younger people uh, increasingly uh, having these conditions. Um, it, it, is insurance playing a role there in terms of, of what a doctor can order? Well, I think the younger, in the same study, they showed these younger people arriving with late stage cancer. So that means they're not going to their doctors when they have symptoms, such as rectal bleeding. And if they're not having symptoms, if they're, not, they're ignoring their symptoms because they don't have insurance, and then they present at a later stage and we can't treat. So I think insurance has a major thing to do with the younger people as well because they're not covered by insurance. Um, but usually over the age of 55, more people are insured. They've shown colon rectal cancer, the incidence decreasing people who have higher income, insured, having jobs. Those are the people that screen more. So it's a, it's a huge, huge consideration. Dr. Ramin Khan, gastroenterologist at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for your time. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.